What does all of this hardware have in common? Every single one can be configured using our new tool, the Vector Hardware Manager. Let me introduce you to your Vector Hardware's best friend. Hi, I'm Simon, Product Management Engineer at Vector. I'm excited to introduce you to our new tool for managing all your Vector Hardware, the Vector Hardware Manager. Let's go. First of all, what is the Vector Hardware Manager? It's a tool that allows you to easily configure, manage and set up your vector devices all in one place. Before we dive into a demo, here are some facts. The Vector Hardware Manager is the successor to the Vector Hardware Config tool. It includes new features, but also retains all existing features from its predecessor. The Vector Hardware Manager is included in our Vector Driver setup, which can be downloaded at vector.com slash drivers. The Vector Hardware Manager is supported in Windows 10 and 11. A seamless transition to the new tool is possible as it adopts all settings configured in the Vector Hardware Config. No migration is needed. Simply open the Vector Hardware Manager and get started. Once the Vector Driver setup is installed, the Vector Hardware Manager can be opened. Let's take a brief look at the different elements. The most important element is the switch on the left. Here you can switch between the status and configuration view. As the name implies, status view simply shows you what is configured, whereas configuration view allows you to change settings. Below, there are four entries, each representing a different topic. These are device properties, Ethernet setup, time synchronization, and application channel mapping. In the middle is the main view area, which provides detailed information depending on which tile is clicked. This section changes in the status and configuration views. On the right, the sidebar lists all connected devices and shows status information for each device. Below, you will find the status bar. This bar shows information about loaded configurations, devices, and most importantly, the currently connected target system. Once you're done with configuring, please remember to write the changes onto the device using the deploy button. Now that we are familiar with the different elements of the graphical user interface, I will show you the three fundamental Vector Hardware Manager views, Backstage Area, Status and Configuration. Click on the burger menu on the upper left corner to open the Backstage view. First, select your target system to which your Vector device is connected. Typically, that's your computer, so we already set it as a default. However, the Vector Hardware Manager can also run on a distributed system such as the VN8900 family. In this case, you can change it here. In the sidebar, you can reload the config of your current target system and of course open or save it as well. Below, under Network Devices, you can connect devices via Ethernet. Further down the sidebar, under Driver Settings, you can configure settings for interfaces globally or individually. Of course, there's also a Help section. You can create a system report here to send us the info we need to help you efficiently. Exit closes the Vector Hardware Manager, as the name implies. As I want to show you more about the Vector Hardware Manager, we won't click on it for now. Let's go back to the status view. The switch in the top left corner allows us to toggle between the status and the configuration view. The status view is our default view and displays the current state of your config in read-only mode. This differs from the configuration view, where you can edit the config of the devices. That's why here you have undo and redo buttons in the title bar. Did you know that you can also add devices in the configuration view that you don't have at hand? Simply click on Add Device. This can be helpful to prepare a configuration where not all of your devices are available or if you want to preview features of devices you don't own yet. We have now covered the various areas of the graphical user interface. Let's add devices to the config to make it more fun to look at the four entries in the navigation rail. In our setup, the VN5650 is connected via Ethernet to the VN5601. The VN5601 is connected via USB to the computer. Going back to network devices, connect to the VN5650. Let's start with the device properties section. The info section shows basic information such as the device name, serial number or driver version. There's also an awesome slideshow that allows us to view our device from all sides in case it's not physically available. The next section, Channels, 
shows the important bus or network technologies supported by the respective channels. In the sidebar, you can set a power LED on your device to flash to help you quickly locate it in crowded measurement setups. Furthermore, we can view the uplink connection and speed to your computer. Now, let's toggle to configuration mode using the switch on the left. What do the device properties look like in configuration view? It's quite different. As mentioned earlier, we can actually make changes here. You may also have noticed that the sidebar on the right has changed. The chain icon indicates whether the device is available to the system. By clicking on the three dots, you can edit the identification of the device, among other things. The Vector Hardware Manager can identify devices using three different options. The strictest option is to detect via device family and serial number. But you can also remove the serial number, meaning that any device in the same family, in our case every VN 5650, will be identified. If you have a stack of identical devices, you can select the hardware index to distinguish your devices independently of serial number. Let's go back to the main section. The available options vary depending on the connected device. Since we'll need an additional port later on, let's set one port to infrastructure switch. Let's look at the next tile, the Ethernet network. Here we can set filters, time sync, and of course, Ethernet networks. In status view, it still looks quite empty. Let's change that in configuration view. Before we begin, I would like to empathize that every setup has two networks, a user network and an infrastructure network. In the Ethernet network configuration, we are configuring the user network, which connects devices to ease use under test. This network comprises all the components necessary to link your device to the ECU, including cables and Ethernet segments configured in this section. The device connects to your computer, possibly alongside other devices, via USB or Ethernet. This connection, along with time synchronization between the devices, forms the infrastructure network. Returning to our configuration, in the Layout tab, you can add an Ethernet network. In the sidebar, click the plus symbol to add an Ethernet segment with your desired ports. The Time Sync tab lets you add GPTP or AutoSAC logs to synchronize your Ethernet user ports. Since nothing is connected, we see a link down at the ports. The status view is also a good place to start debugging the physical layer and checking for link status. The next stop is infrastructure time synchronization. Here, we can synchronize individual devices with each other to ensure precise, synchronized timestamps. For now, we can see that all devices have different timescales and are not synchronized. Let's change that by switching to the configuration view. Before we begin, I should mention that the time synchronization configuration greatly depends on your setup. To demonstrate, I will bring in a VN1641 and connect it to an infrastructure port of the VN5650. The goal is to synchronize this device and the computer via PTP IEEE 1588. Going back to network devices, let's add the VN1641 to our configuration. The time synchronization provider is always on the left. In this case, we will set the VN5601 as the PTP time transmitter and the other devices as receivers. In the sidebar, ensure that our transmitter is set to local, which means that it has its own clock and provides PTP time synchronization. The VN5601 should also provide software time synchronization for our computer. Deploy it, then go back to the status view to check if we are in sync. In the sidebar, we should only see green clocks. Perfect! Last, but certainly not least, is the application channel mapping configuration. Here, we provide all necessary information about the mapping. As usual, the status view is quite empty, since we have not configured anything yet. In the configuration view, the horizontal bar shows the individual applications to which you can assign channels. Is your application not listed? Click the plus symbol on the right to edit. For now, let's assume that we want to map a CAN channel in Canalyzer. Click Add Mapping and select your desired bus system. The first column shows the application channel and next to it the device with its serial number is listed. Next, we see the hardware channel and, most importantly, the connector of the CAN bus. You can basically change the application channel, the device and the hardware channels to your needs in this table. As usual, don't forget to deploy the changes. That's it, my introduction of the Vector Hardware Manager. I hope this video helps you to get started. Please check help.vector.com for the latest version of the documentation if you need further help.
You are also very welcome to contact our support team at support at vector.com if you have questions or feedback too. I'm Simon. Have a nice day and thanks for watching. I appreciate you staying around for the whole tutorial. Help yourself to some more videos on our Vector Tech Tutorial channel. Subscribe and hit the bell.